Okay, in this video, we are gonna do some optimization problems, specifically problems that involve fences, which is sort of a common type of problem. So you can see the three problems that we're gonna do. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in and uh, get going with them. So the first one, farmer has 2,400 feet of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight river. She needs no fence along the river. Um, what are the dimensions of field that has the largest area? So I think in general, it's a good idea to create a picture of these things. So I went ahead and did that. So we have the river, um, and then we have two sides that are perpendicular to it and one that runs parallel to it. So I'm gonna give those variables. So we'll go with X uh, parallel and then Y perpendicular. So what are we really doing here? Well, if you read the problem again, we have 2,400 feet of fencing. And so uh, that's kind of a perimeter thing. Um, so x plus 2y is going to have to equal 2400. Uh, so that's the fence that we can use. So I'm going to call this a helper equation um, because we're going to use this to solve the problem, but it's not the thing that we're trying to like optimize. So we're just going to hold on to that for a second. Um, in the problem, it says uh, we're trying to find the dimensions of the field that has the largest area. So I'm going to write down an area thing. We are trying to maximize the area, which it's a rectangle, so it's just x times y. So now what we'll do, uh, we have too many variables, right? We have A, we have a X, and Y, um, but we don't really know what to do with that. The helper equation is going to help. I mean, that's the point of it. So here, I'm going to solve this for X. You could solve it for X or for Y. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, usually, you want to look at the thing you're trying to optimize and see which one is easier. But in this case, it's just X times Y. Like if you had to cube Y, then you might not want to solve for Y, for example. Um, but in this case, it doesn't make a difference. So now we will rewrite the area as just a function of y in this case. Um, so the area is, so I'm substituting for x, 2400 minus 2y, and then times y. So it's the same thing. I just use the helper equation to rewrite the thing I'm trying to optimize. And now it's uh, just kind of a straight you know, derivative. We're trying to optimize something, so we're going to take the first derivative. So I'm expanding. No, uh, take the derivative with respect to y, so it's going to be 2400 and then minus 4y. Um, so y was our variable, so the derivative with respect to y. Uh, I'm going to set it equal to zero, and from there you can, I mean you can do the math, but you can kind of see that y is going to be 600. Um, so with these problems, you do want to like verify that you're getting what you expect, right? We're looking for the largest area, so we're looking for a maximum. So I'm gonna use the first derivative test on this. So create a sign chart for a prime. Uh, if I plug in something less than 600, like if I plug in one, for example, I definitely get positives. If I plug in something bigger than 600, uh, so 600 gives you 2400, so anything bigger, you're definitely gonna get a negative out of this. Um, and therefore, I know that there's a maximum at y equals 600. So that's not like good enough uh, for the AP exam, but that's definitely good enough when you're just uh, running through a lot of optimization problems, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, I have other videos that explain the kind of justifications you should give on the exam if you are an AP calculus. Uh, okay, so I got 600. I need the actual dimensions though, so I need to know what X is also. But I have this equation that can do that. So X is gonna be 2400 minus two times this value I found. Um, which means x is 1200. Okay, and then what I want to do is actually answer the question, which I didn't really do yet, so I'm looking for the dimensions. I think you should be careful when you answer this, right? Because there's two different things here. There's a side that's parallel and a side that's perpendicular. So uh, let me just show you what I wrote out. So the dimensions are 1200 feet parallel to the river and by 600 feet perpendicular to the river. So those are the dimensions that will give us the largest area. Okay, let's solve another one of these problems. So this is almost the same problem, but it kind of like flips it. So we have a farmer who plants the fence a rectangular pasture adjacent to a river, same scenario. The pasture must contain 245,000 square meters in order to provide enough grass for the herd. Uh, what dimensions will require the least amount of fencing if no fencing is needed along the river? So it's almost exactly the same problem, but reversed. So instead of knowing how much fence I have and optimizing the area, I now know how much area I need and I'm gonna optimize the amount of fence. So I'm gonna start with a picture again though, same exact picture. Um, and let's think, so let's go back through the problem and find our helper equation 
and then what we want to optimize, right? So a pasture must contain 245,000 square meters, which means the area of this thing has to be 245,000, which means my helper equation is going to be x times y is 245,000. So that's the helper equation. And now what am I trying to do? Uh, I want the least amount of fencing. So least amount of fencing, I'm trying to minimize, I guess, the perimeter, which would be x plus 2y. And now, too many variables, right? We have p, x, and y. Go back to the helper equation and use it to eliminate one of the variables. So I'm going to say that y is equal to 245,000 divided by x. So we'll take that, go back to the thing we're trying to optimize. The whole goal is to turn the thing you're trying to optimize, either find the maximum or minimum, into a function of a single variable so that we know how to deal with it. So I'm gonna take this y where it's a function of x, sub that in, and suddenly my perimeter is just a function of x. And that's the goal. So once I've done that, that's, that's good. Now I can start doing calculus with it. Uh, I'm gonna simplify this. So you get x plus 490,000 over x. Um, I'm gonna take the derivative now. Like you might be tempted to combine those, but then you have kind of a quotient rule situation when you find the derivative. Here you can um, take the derivative. I'm gonna think of it as 490,000 times x to the negative first. Um, and then the derivative of x to the negative first is negative x to the negative second. Um, but, so the derivative of x is one, and then 490,000 times x to the negative first. So I'm gonna bring down the negative one, negative 490,000, x to the negative second, and I'm gonna write that as minus 490,000 over x squared. And now I will get a common denominator because I'm going to want to set this equal to zero and solve, um, and I just think it's easier this way. Um, but you could have just set that equal to zero and move the one over, uh, cross multiplied, blah, blah, blah. You'll end up in the same place. So I'm gonna factor you know, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe it would have been easier to do it the other way. I don't really know. Um, so it is a difference of squares. So that was that was lucky. Probably not lucky. Usually these problems are kind of written that way. Um, I, this needs to be equal to zero. So we're looking for critical points. So zero is a critical point, but like you're just not going to do that. So I'm not really worried about that, right? You're not going to do it because um, if x is equal to zero, then the area of this thing would be equal to zero, and that doesn't make any sense because it needs to equal 245,000. So zero is not really in the domain. Negative numbers are not in the domain either, which means when I solve, I get either x is 700 or x is negative 700, but I can cross out that negative 700 like right away. I do, so I think x is 700. I do need to show that that's actually going to give me the minimum value of this perimeter. So what I'll do is, uh, because of the, the way the second the first derivative looks rather, uh, I'm gonna take the second derivative and use the second derivative test on this. So p double prime, the derivative of one is zero. And then I'm gonna think of x squared as x to the negative second. So you bring down the exponent, that's negative two, x to the negative third, negative two times negative 49, 400, Negative two times negative 490,000 is positive 980,000. So I'm gonna end up with 980,000 times x to the negative third, which I'll write as 980,000 over x cubed. I'm gonna check this at x equals 700. I definitely get a positive. I don't even care what it is, just as long as it's positive, which means that I'm kind of looking at a thing that is concave up and has a horizontal tangent line at x equals 700. So concave up, horizontal tangent line, that is definitely a minimum. So that's the second derivative test, which hopefully you've seen before. I do need to find the overall dimensions. Um, so I'm gonna go to the helper equation and use that to figure out what y is. So 245,000 divided by 700, turns out to be 3,500. Definitely use a calculator for that. Um, and then I'm gonna write down the answer. So uh, again, you want to be careful because you got something parallel to the river, something perpendicular. So I'm going to say the dimensions are 700 meters parallel to the river by 3,500 meters perpendicular to the river. Okay, we're going to solve one more problem, which is actually like kind of different, but it does involve a fence. Um, so a rancher, it's, it's always ranchers and farmers, 
A rancher has 400 feet of fencing. That's not true. Sometimes people are building warehouses also, but in general, it's ranchers and farmers. A rancher has 400 feet of fencing with which to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals. What dimensions should be used so that the enclosed area will be a maximum? So we're going to try to maximize um, the area. So I'm going to start with a picture again. So two adjacent corrals just looks like two rectangles that are next to each other. So something like this. And the way that I drew it, I kind of color coded it. You can see that there's uh, this kind of horizontal dimension, which I'm going to call X. And there's two of those. And then there's this vertical dimension, which I'm going to call Y. And so uh, what are we doing in this problem? We have 400 feet of fencing. So that's the perimeter is like a fixed amount. Uh, it's not really the perimeter, though. It's just the total amount of fencing. So there's two X's and three Y's, and they have to add up to 400. So that's going to be our helper equation. So that's going to work out to, man, that is some slow writing. Okay, so it's, there's two X's, there are three Y's, and it adds up to 400. We're going to sit on that for a second, go back to the problem and see, like, what are we trying to maximize, right? We're trying to maximize the total enclosed area, which looks more complicated uh, than it actually is, right? Because the total enclosed area is actually just the giant rectangle, right? Which is actually just X times Y. So we're trying to maximize the area, which is just x times y. Um, so now, too many variables. We have an a, an x, a y. We want to get rid of one of them. You can either get rid of x or y. Both of them are kind of annoying in this case. So I'm going to, I find in general, people choose to eliminate y because every function you look at is pretty much a function of x. So I'm going to do that. Um, so y is 400 minus 2x divided by 3. So let's go back to our area and substitute for y and turn it into a function of just x. So x times the quantity, 400 minus 2x divided by 3. And I'm going to expand this. I could choose to use the product rule there, but I'm going to expand it first and then just kind of power rule my way through it. Given a choice, you should always try to use the power rule if possible. Um, so I turned a product into something I can use power rule on. OK, so a prime. Um, I have 400 over 3 times x, so that uh, by taking the derivative is just 400 over 3. Then I have negative 2 thirds x squared. The derivative of that's going to be negative 4x over 3. So let's take the derivative. So a prime is 400 over 3 from that linear term, and then minus 4 over 3 times x from that quadratic. Okay, we're going to set this equal to 0 and solve. So a prime equals zero. You can do the math, but you can just look at this and see like uh, x equals 100 is definitely going to give you zero. And now what we want to do is make sure we actually are getting what we think. Um, so I could do the first or second derivative test on this. It doesn't make a difference. They're, um, I guess, equally challenging or equally simple in this case. I'm going to use the first derivative test because I think most people would do that. So a prime, uh, 100 goes on there. Uh, if I plug in something uh, less than 100, like for example, almost basically zero, I definitely get positives. If I plug in something bigger than 100, like uh, 101, uh, I definitely get negatives. Uh, also, that's just a line that's with a negative slope, so it definitely passes from positives to negatives. I like to think of derivatives that way, not everyone does. Um, but you know, the, the number line, the sign chart, is really just a representation of the graph where all you care about is, is the derivative, is the question, is the derivative above or below the x-axis? So to the left of 100, the derivative is above the x-axis. To the right of 100, the derivative is below, um, which is kind of a tangent that you didn't really need here. But anyway, we went from positive to negative on the derivative, definitely a maximum for the function when x is 100. I need to know the uh, dimensions, right? So I'm going to go back to my helper equation and figure out what y is. So y is 400 minus 2 times 100 over 3, um, which is just 200 over 3. And then we want to actually answer the question, which we didn't do yet. So again, we want to be careful because we have like a, a really long dimension, and then we have um, three shorter dimensions. So I'm going to write my answer to account for that. So the dimensions are going to be 100 feet for the two long edges by 200 over 3 feet for the three shorter edges. Um, which I, I don't know how else you're going to explain that. Maybe include the picture. Uh, all right, so that's three calculus optimization problems, all of which involve fences, 
the first two are basically the same problem in two different perspectives. Um, and then this one, sometimes you'll see it as, uh, you know, I don't know, a, like a warehouse or uh, whatever, just something where you're making compartments that are adjacent. But I hope you found this helpful and good luck.